you're on. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're all familiar with me. I'm Harry. We are going to do a Cavatron outline course. I'm sure many of you have ran into Cavatrons or ultrasonic scalers, as they're known as, in several offices and had several repair requests. Cavatrons are, look more intimidating than they are. Do not be afraid of them. You have plumbing and electricity in a small box. Still, there is no reason to be afraid. They can be diagnosed easily and quickly and can actually make a good account for you. Most of your bigger companies, whom shall remain nameless, don't work on Cavatrons in situ or in the office or in the operatory. They offer a repair service at Pro Repair or their central repair facility where such items are sent and forwarded to. The Cavatron is not an essential item in a dental office. Essential meaning that they cannot work without it. If the Cavatron goes down, there'll be much grumbling from the hygienist because she has to hand scale. Now, we'll explain the differences between ultrasonic scaling and hand scaling in a moment. But first, let's familiarize ourselves with the machine and the components. Our main unit, our base unit, is a Cavatron itself. You will hear the Cavatron referred to under many different names. Ultrasonic scaler, scaler, ultrasonic descaler, bobcat, clean machine. Several different names will apply to the same type of equipment. There are many manufacturers that make a Cavatron. Cavatron, let me do an analogy. The Cavatron name is a catch-all name for all ultrasonic scalers, but it is copyrighted by the Dent Supply Company. It's like uh, Frigidaire and Kleenex are trademark names, but everybody calls every tissue a Kleenex, everybody calls every refrigerator a Frigidaire. Same with Cavatrons. So don't assume when you get the dispatch said Cavatron out that it's going to be a Cavatron brand. Okay. That being said, let's go into some components of the machine. Your first component is your base unit, which we've already discussed. You have an on-off master switch. Most of these parts are available aftermarket from DCI or either Chapman Hoffman. You have a frequency control, which translates into a power or strength control and you have a water control. Very important that this machine broadcast water while it's cavitating or using ultrasound. Ultrasound and cavitation produce heat. The heat will transfer to the dentition or the gingival tissue and actually burn the patient and kill the tooth. So you need good water to cool the procedure. Our next component is the handpiece, the handpiece and cord assembly. This is a field replaceable item, gentlemen and ladies. This is field replaceable. You can either replace the cords, just the cords on the inside of them, which calls for much therapy work and much, much, much precise soldering. Or you can replace the whole hand switch, hand piece, and cord assembly, which is what I strongly recommend you to do. Most of the times, your difficulties with your hand piece are going to come from a memory, which means the hygienist uses the hand piece holds it as any other instrument, like a pencil. When she's scaling on the lower arch or your mandible, that cord becomes accustomed to this position and actually memorizes that position. And when you hang the cord back up, it will actually stay there. 
There are three wires, very small wires, approximately the size of about five strands of hair each that go through there. The wire always breaks right there. Right there, as you can see, it's a pivot. There's strain release in it, but it breaks. To properly diagnose that, you would actually run the cavitron, flex the hose, you'll hear it cut in and cut out, stop, start, stop, start. You know you got a short right there, you know to replace the tubing. Guys, if you replace this tubing, order and replace this tubing in the office without carrying this cavitron off, it is a kudo, it is a caveat. The doctor will love you because everybody else sends their cavitrons out. <clears throat> also, also examine the cord. This cord may drape on the floor slightly. Examine the cord very subtly for cuts, dents, or nicks in this cord. The cord is very fragile. If it's stepped on or rolled over with a, with a, with a stool, kiss it goodbye. There's also a small eighth inch water line traveling through here that delivers the water in conjunction with the wires. Very important that the cord be maintained and be protected. That's one replaceable component in the office. Your next component is the foot control. Very simple foot control. Essentially, it's an on-off switch and a pedal, spring-loaded pedal. If you can hear this click, we're activating the switch and turning the ultrasound on in the machine to make the machine usable in the oral cavity. Foot controls are usually pretty durable. This is a durable foot control. This is an industrial foot control that they used to cut lays on and off with. It's just a different application on the foot control. Your foot control will plug in on the reverse side of the machine. Just like so. The first thing you should check if when they hit the foot control, the machine doesn't work, make sure you have a good connection in the back. Make sure the foot control is connected well. Okay. Your next component, and you have plenty of, of, of length on your foot control. And the foot control line can be extended too with just regular wire. You can make a foot control extension if that's necessary to accommodate your doctor or your hygienist. Your third component, as we turn the machine over, is your incoming power cord. Very simple, 110, has a male plug on the end of it. Plug it into a 110 power source. You also have a fuse and a bayonet fitting, which is a standard bayonet fitting. Like so, you unscrew the fuse holder. The fuse will come out with the fuse holder, and you check continuity on your fuse. You can do a visible on it for a broken filament in the fuse, or you can check continuity. The fuse nomenclature and specifications for the fuse are plainly written on the machine. It takes a 1.25 amp slow blow fuse. Slow blow being very important. Two types of fuses, a fast acting and a slow blow. If you exceed 1.2 amps, 1.25 amps on this fuse, you risk burning the electronics and the circuit boards in the machine up. Better to blow the fuse than a $500 circuit board. Okay? These are very, very basic things to check in the office with a complaint that anybody can do. Now we've restored our fuse back into our fuse holder. Our other component is an incoming water line. 
Francisco. The incoming water line is usually going to be blue to specify water. However, if you get out in the dental office and you don't have a piece of blue line, don't let that stop you. Put whatever color line you got on there. This is a high pressure water line. It distributes the water pressure that the delivery system it is attached to hooks provides. On one end of the water line, we have a male quick disconnect, a quarter inch male quick disconnect. This is available from DCI, part number 0012, available through parts of Dental Fix RX. This will plug into a female quick disconnect and actually supply water to the machine. Now, I'm going to go over very briefly how to disassemble the machine. We have the machine turned over already. In the back of the machine, some machines have four screws and some machines have two screws. Inside the wells. And they should be Phillips screws. They came from the factory with Phillips head. Sometimes you'll see regular heads in there where somebody lost a screw and didn't have a Phillips head to put in it. After we unloosen both of these screws, turn the machine over. The screws should drop. The cover lifts right off. Set the cover aside. By all means, please turn the power off to this machine before taking the cover off. Internally, we have a few components. And we have some field replaceable components. Again, this will greatly endear you to your accounts if you can repair these in situ. We have a transformer, a very simple transformer. Very, very, very simple. 110 to 115 out and 24 volts in and 24 volts out secondary. Your primary current coming in, 110 line current. You got 24 volts, which supplies 24 volts to your main circuit board. The heart, brains, lungs, everything of the Cavitron. Board level repairs cannot be done in the office. Out then an out and out board replacement. When you have a board problem, or you suspect you have a board problem, immediately take the machine if the doctor will let you. Don't take the board out for the entire machine to SER. Let Eddie scope the board and replace components on necessary if the board is reparable. Then again, unless you have an oscilloscope and you know electronics, do not fool with the board. That's our job down here. Now, attached to your board is your handpiece lead. Bingo. Easy to change. That's the only electronic. When you get a new handpiece, it will come with the Molex plug on it. No problem. The handpiece interfaces with a grommet through the front of the machine for strain relief. You also have a water line that starts right here that supplies the water to cool the machine. This water is otherwise known as lavage and hygiene. Lavage. It will create a halo and an atomization mist similar to a high-speed handpiece and cool the toast surface down and wash away the scaled-off calculus tartar and debris to where it can be suctioned out of the mouth. Very easy sell, very common problem. And we want you to repair these until they get to board level. There's no reason why they can't be repaired. Now. To show you the other components, I am going to remove the fascia of the Cavitron. 
To remove the fascia of the Cabotron, it's very easy. One finger each hand. I'm going to show the camera a little ridge in there. There's a little cutout square. Can you ladies and gentlemen at home see this? Right there. What you do is both your fingers on the inside, you can do them one at a time, you actually push that out. Pull it away. Set it aside. Don't lose them. Set this one aside. Pull this one. Pump this one out. Pull it out. Set it aside. Don't lose it. Now let me turn the machine around to demonstrate a little bit easier. <clears throat> the fascia will come straight off after that, guys. Straight off. Your water line will still remain on the fascia, as well as a few Molex plugs that take the data from your potentiometers and your valves to the circuit board to send more power to the machine or less power to the machine. On the fascia is also your water adjustment valve or your needle valve. slack out here. Gentlemen, do not take a regular flow control needle valve for a delivery system and replace this. Number one, it'll potentiate the water, but number two, it will not fit. We have a unique bracketing and linkage system that starts from the knob with this C bracket that holds the regulator on. These are available from DCI or either Chapman Hoffman. You will see a lot of these leaking. A lot of them leaking. Okay? It's about a 30 minute job to replace it. This is similar the way I did. Disconnect the water to it. This is the same blue water hose. Attaches to the back with a polyflow fitting. Same blue water hose that has the male quick disconnect on the other end. You're just routing the water from the delivery system through this valve and adjusting the water spray with it. An indication that the valve needs to be replaced is, looking straight on the valve, we see a weep hole. Can you guys see the weep hole there, the small hole? Let me know. You'll actually see stains and calcification where it looks like water has been running down this weep hole. This one's got a slight amount to it, okay? When you see it dripping, dripping, dripping continually, it's time to replace the valve, the needle valve. Again, available from Chapman Hoffman. Easily replaceable in the field, gentlemen. If you have any questions when you're doing it, call me. It's simple, okay? Let's lay the fascia aside, and let's look at another component that is replaceable. We've already determined we can replace our transformer our water valve. We can also replace the on and off switch, gentlemen. On and off switch available through Chapman Hoffman and probably DCI now. The on and off switch is easy. Pulls right out. There's a slide in there and a mounting fascia pulls right out. Very simple switch, a push-push switch with a spring that retains it and holds it down. Sometimes the switch will get fouled. It goes through the little corresponding hole in the fascia. Sometimes when they wipe the units down with their surface disinfectants, it will foul the button and make the button stick inside the fascia. You can just take and abrade the button a little bit and make sure you've got smooth movement through the fascia. And it'll be at other times if the switch sticks after you've got it out of the fascia in this position, go ahead and order a new switch and replace it. You will need your soldering skills for this because as you can see, solder, 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 solder. This is all designed to help you 
retain a little bit of your repair money. Okay. Our next component, which is an extremely field replaceable item, is the solenoid and coil, gentlemen. The solenoid and coil is responsible for stopping and starting the water flow in conjunction with your pressing the foot control. The indication to replace the solenoid is at the end of the handpiece when you get through and the handpiece is in the hanger of the holder on the side of the unit. If you get a drip, 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 you know the water's leaking past the solenoid. It's either going to be A, debris in the solenoid, which is highly unlikely, or B, plunger in the solenoid has just worn out. Replace the solenoid. Uh, then again, a Chapman Hoffman item. Easy replacement. It bolts right through the, the frame. Eighth inch water line, eighth inch water line. Very easy. There's no reason why you guys can't do this in the field. I reiterate. Okay? Now, before you do do anything to the water system, to uh, the solenoid, or make another handpiece connection when you replace a handpiece, make sure the water is disconnected. Make sure the power's off. If you spill water on this board, or drip water on the board, and you power it back up, you're going to smoke the board. So, with the can of air that you that I've highly advised everybody to carry, or either with the doctor's syringe, take the air and dry the board off. And don't just give it a lick and a promise. Stay in there and dry that board and look. Use your eyes. Look for moisture on that board. If you don't see any moisture, you are good to go. Okay? This basically concludes the serviceability in the field. Okay? 95% of your problems are field serviceable in the Cavitron. Fully 95% of them. Again, I reiterate, if it's the power board or a circuit board and it sends it back. But everything else can be done in the field. And it makes you look like a hero. There's a water filter attachment that we highly recommend you use. It's a flying saucer shaped affair. You can see. It's laminated in two parts that are bonded together with a filter disc in the middle of it. It will save you solenoid debris problems. Okay? The way it fits, it's an easy install. Then again, available through parts at dentalfixrx.com. It's a lure lock, just like a doctor's syringe. You cut the water line after you cut the water off, by the way. You put your accompanying fittings in, and you snap, snap, and there's your water filter. And they can buy eh, about every three months. It's all according to how much uh, debris and stuff is in their naturally occurring water, in the building water, or even in the bottled water. They're using a water bottle. You can run this off a bottled water system as well. Okay. Should be replaced about every three months. Or when you look at it, when their water flow starts depleting at the handpiece, you know that the filter is getting clogged. Common sense. Very easy sale. Very easy sale. Okay. Now. Cavitron comes from the term cavitate. Who can tell me what cavitation means? Disruption. Disruption, extreme vibration, extreme oscillation. To cavitate means to vibrate ultrasonically, which is exactly what this does. It uses a tip insert. You'll hear them called Capitron tips, inserts, or stacks. You'll hear three different terms. 
the insert goes into the handpiece just like this. Snaps down. Let me show you again. With an O-ring. That's all that retains it in there. When you depress the foot control, you start the cavitation or ultrasound. You hear a slight whine and you'll see water. The ultrasound, the extreme vibration and, cavitron of, and cavitation of your tip actually creates the atomization of the lavage or the water. This takes the place of this. That's why your hygienist will grumble and moan if you've got to send it back. Because she's going to have to hand scale. Anytime she hand scales to remove calculus and stuff on a heavy smoker, a patient that's less than compliant about their home care, flossing, you're going to build up calculus. Calculus is a very hard mineralization, and she's going to have to physically remove it by picking at it with the scaler, like so. With the Cavitron, all the hygienist has to do is hold the Cavitron on the surface, and it knocks the cavitation, dispels, dissolves, and knocks the calculus away so it can be suctioned out with a saliva injector. She's not yanking, she's not pulling, she's not getting carpal tunnel. Very easy. It's a no-brainer. It is a no-brainer. All hygienists are taught to hand scale in hygiene school, but they don't like it because it's a whole lot of work. Uh, doctors like for a hygienist to see a patient every 45 minutes to one hour to keep her productive. When she's hand scaling, there is no way if she's got a patient with a heavy calculus buildup. Makes the procedure go a lot faster. Next, please. Next patient. Okay. These Cavitron stacks or tips are fully autoclavable. They are fully autoclavable. You put them in an autoclave bag, then you autoclave them. Even though they have plastic components on them, the plastic is designed to take up to 270, 275 degrees, even 280 degrees. You do not want to put a Cavitron stack tip or insert in an ultrasonic cleaner. In an ultrasonic instrument cleaner. An ultrasonic instrument cleaner cleans by ultrasound, which is produced by cavitation under the tank. These tips are tuned. They are tuned. Cavitation is so familiar to radio frequency, or RF, that it's measured in kilohertz the same way radio waves are measured, in kilohertz. This is in or case. This is a 30K tip, which fits the newer machines. You got much more power and much more efficiency with a 30K tip. Your older machines took a 25K tip. Now, what did we say K meant? Kilohertz. The older machines took a 25K tip, and the difference is very obvious. You see your length differences? Which means that a 25K tip will not fit in a 30K handpiece. See? However, a 30K tip will fit in a 25K handpiece because it's shorter. And it will cavitate like the Dickens for about 10 minutes until it blows the tip to pieces. Some ultrasonic scalers will take a 25 or a 30K tip. Only Parkell, only the Parkell clean machine will take a dual tip and one Southeast Instrument scaler will take a dual tip. Okay.
a lot of times hygienists are usually going to have at least four Cavitron tips. The tips are all done differently as per numbers and nomenclature. The tips are all configured differently. Um, roughly the part numbers on the tips, like a P10 number, TFI 10, are going to go hand in hand with the number in one variation or another on a hand scaler. In other words, the hygienist is going to want to use a tip that she was used to in hygiene school and that she's comfortable with that's shaped like her hand scaler tip that she learned with. Okay. Gentlemen, if these tips are put in the ultrasonic, if they're dropped and they land on the tip on the tile, if they're mistreated, they're banged against other equipment, it will bend that tip and knock that tip out of tune. And it will never do right. It will get hot. It will burn the patient. It will actually burn the hygiene, not burning leave blisters. It will transfer heat through this handpiece and through this glove and through her glove. And think of what the patient feels. They're going to feel it on their soft tissue. Because inside this handpiece is wound coils. It's nothing but an electromagnet. Wound coils inside here. When the electricity is shot to the coils in the handpiece, it magnetizes the, stack, the, the uh, stacks in the fins on the handpiece, on the Cavitron tip. If we could zoom in here just a little bit, Paul, let me show you how these spread out. Can everybody see how you can spread these out? They're a series of thin metal, thin metal slices held together with a piece of solder on one end. As the electricity hits them, the magnet that surrounds them in the handpiece, it causes these to cavitate and open up and magnetize against each other and chatter and cause ultrasound or cavitation. The ultrasound and the cavitation is directly transferred through a shaft right to the tip. And then that's directly transferred to the two surface to blast the calculus. Maintenance on tips. All tips have an O-ring on them. If you get a complaint, my cavitron's leaking from around the tip, replace the O-ring on the tips. The O-ring does two purposes. It seals the water into the handpiece and only lets the water come out in a halo on the tip. And it also suspends the tip at the right tolerance between the magnetic coil in there to get optimum cavitation. If the tip's too close to one side of the coil or too close to the other side of the coil, you don't have the tolerance that the O-ring shims it and it either gets hot, it'll either super scale or it'll, it'll, it will just subpar performance on it. You won't have a whole lot of ultrasound. Okay? The O-rings are very important. Again, available through us, DCI, or either Chapman Hoffman. They're autoclavable up to a certain number of times. Okay? And not many hygienists know about changing the O-rings on their tips. And again, you can be a hero again with a lousy O-ring. To diagnose a bad tip, it's very obvious. You see this one? It's broke off. Uh, let's find another one that's broke off. There's another broken off one. It's not broken off to the same degree. You can see where it was going to come out at a 45 degree angle, like a regular H6, H7 hand scaler. See where it's broken off? It's of absolutely no use. There are companies that re tip scalar tips. Beware. They re tip ultrasonic scalar tips. 
be careful about that. Check with Paul, me, or Eddie before you do that. Now, also, what you want to look for on the bottom end of the insert is nice straight fins. If you can see the subtle waves in that stack, see how it's wavy? Let me show it to you, Jeff. See how we're wavy? Versus a healthy tip. Now, what we're going to do is get a healthy tip stack, and I'll show you. Look how straight the stacks are on this one as compared to this one. Am I holding them at the right angle there, Paul? Mm -hmm. See? You want them nice and straight. Also, prime indicator is splayed out fins. By splayed out fins, Extreme spaces between your fins. If you guys can observe and see how it looks fat or swollen up as compared to this one. See the bulge from here to here? That's not good. The correct cavitation depends on the spaces between these fins being observed so they cavitate, cavitate freely. Do not run a cavitron without water. It will burn up the handpiece. It will melt the windings in the handpiece. And it will actually burn the tip to a cinder. Nothing that's going to catch on fire. It's just going to be expensive. So always make sure you have plenty of coolant water through there. Dental fix. For the benefit of all of us, we have our own tips manufactured by a very reputable company. We've had this line for a while. It is a very proven line. Very cost effective. Between a dense fly or a U3D tip, you're looking at a good $75 to $100 difference per Cavitron tip or insert. Good sell, easy sell. These are available at parts at dentalfixrx.com. Nothing builds goodwill and continuity of business better than chatting with the hygienist saying, uh, listen, ma'am, we make our own brand of tips, and I'd kind of like you to kick the tires on it. Tell me what you think. Give her a tip. Give her a tip. That opens the door for more sales on more tips. She will also talk to her other hygienist friends and tell them that hey, these guys have got inexpensive tips. They're really good. Great way to make money. I strongly advise you to get a 30K tip and a 25K tip. Call me and I'll tell you the most commonly used ones, which is going to be a T10 or a TFI 10. And we'll work with it. These are great. They're a little expensive, but they're great business builders and it works. I've done it myself and have been with several people that have done it. So we heavily support this tip, the corporate, and I suggest you guys heavily support it too. We have a few more examples of different tip staggers. Same tip, slightly different angle. Which means one of them's been dropped, or one of them's been bent. Okay. They should never sharpen the tip. You don't sharpen an ultrasonic tip. You don't want sharpness on the tip. What you want is a good transfer of cavitation surface from tip to enamel. Here is another variation on the same tip. That one hasn't been bent. 
that tip was manufactured that way. Each tip is going to correspond roughly with the tip on a hand scaler again. Ladies and gentlemen, these are very easy sales. This is very basic and should be in your ornament chip. You should have them really available and show them with gusto. You will sell them because they are so cost effective. But I suggest you let them kick them around first. Gentlemen, are there any questions? Got one. Okay, Ryan. Uh, this is Ryan, uh, a new man up in Michigan. We're very pleased to have Ryan. Are there any common parts? Well, you listed all the common parts, but are there some that we should just absolutely keep on our trucks that it's, it would behoove us to, to just have maybe one of this that to have on hand? Ryan, I'll swim straight with you. A lot of these parts are extremely expensive. The handpiece and the cord is going to be roughly around three to four hundred dollars. In a situation where you can get them next day air, I wouldn't suggest you write it on your inventory. You can get them next day air. Again, I stress this is not an essential item. It's a grumbly item. The hygienist will grumble. But life will go on. The air compressor works. The doctor's still seeing patients since he's hand scaling for a day or so. Everybody eats burn toast every once in a while. Now, what you should stock, what you will get in your stock, is water line. You'll have that. This water line works in several applications, which you already know. Delivery systems, anything. Okay? You should stock a couple of quick disconnects, which I believe one or two comes with your initial stock. 0011 male QD, one quarter inch. 0012 female QD, one quarter inch, VCI. That's what you should stock. If you're going to do the filter gig, stock your filters. Chris went through a lot to figure, to, to find these filters. Is, is that the only brand of filter or, or style that we were quote unquote approved to use? Yes. Okay. So we should not employ any other kind of filter except for that? Except that. Okay. It's easy to change filter, Ryan. Um, again, I said it had lure locks on it. Mm -hmm. Like if you're putting a needle on a string, you slightly push and turn and the yep. needles retain. Same way with this. It's lure lock, L-U-E-R lock. Okay. Even with a medical background, I already know what lure lock is. So you don't have to pull a tubing off a bar. The girls can do it in the office. However, they'll forget to turn the water off and flood the place, and they'll call you, and you, there you go. So when, you, when the filter is discolored, change it. Okay. And you may want to stock a couple of tip O-rings, which are available at dentalfixrx.com, or either you can look up in Chapman Hoffman or either in D.C. Out of Parts Warehouse and get the tip O-rings. And again, guys, Keep some tips with you. Keep some tips with you. You can't sell them if you ain't got them. Okay. In closing, let me also mention that we sell a couple of different brands of ultrasonic scalers here ourselves. We sell Southeastern Instruments, which is a good scaler. We also sell Bone Art. We also sell bone art, and we also service Cavatron brand, Dent Supply brand, and we also service bone art and Southeast Instruments. You'll see scalers out there, ultrasonic scalers, manufactured by Benco. You will see them manufactured by Henry Shine. You'll see them manufactured by Alias Smith and Jones. You'll see several different brands. They all do the same thing. They all do the same thing. It's all toward the same end, and they all service basically the same. So don't let brand difference scare you. Yes, sir. The uh, speaking to brand difference, mm -hmm. the, the parts we get from Chapman, Hoffman, or, or DCI, RPA, wherever the case may be, are they basically universal to brand to brand to brand? 
as far as the, the components I'm going to see in that are going to be extremely similar to, we'll say Benko has this type of scaler, Shine makes this kind. Am I going to be able to essentially have universal parts? Yes. Okay. Most solenoids fit most scalers. Okay. Now the circuit boards aren't going to, they're not going to right. adapt. You're at a board level. Board level will be specific, but right. I mean, common components, are those actually truly common? Yes. Okay. Very much so. The water lines, everything is common. Mm -hmm. Except the electronics. Okay. Got it. Your solenoids are going to be common and everything. Most AMP's cord and assemblies are going to be common too. If not, you can adapt them in one way or another. As long as the cord and the handpiece is rated for the scaler. Two whip, 25K or 30K, you have to order the handpiece according to the kilohertz value of the scaler as well. Everybody uses ultrasonic scalers. Everybody has a window of opportunity here to increase revenues and to make yourself even more important to the doctor and his staff in doing this. Very easy way, very easy way, very professional, very clean work. Any more questions? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, let's have a short review. If we have a printed circuit board problem, please send the machine to SER. Don't take the board out and send it to SER. We need the machine, the whole machine, as well as the board, so we can see how the board works in correlation to the rest of the machine and confirm, and confirm a bad board diagnosis. Okay? Thank you very much, and happy selling and happy repairing. Please, any questions can be fielded to Paul or myself. Have a good day.